Hello, this is Dr. Stephen Feldman. I'm professor of dermatology, pathology, and public health sciences at Wake Forest University School of Medicine. I'll be discussing an open label observational study evaluating calcipatrine 0.005%, beta methasone dipropionate 0.064% foam in psoriasis patients being treated with biologic agents. The poster was presented by Dr. Bagel and colleagues at the 76th annual meeting of the American Academy of Dermatology on February 16th through 20th, 2018 in San Diego, California. This open label, single arm, real world trial assessed the efficacy and safety of adding topical calcipatrine beta-methasone dipropionate in patients with moderate to severe psoriasis with significant disease activity despite stable biologic therapy. At weeks four and 16, topical calcipatrine beta-methasone was associated with significant improvement in every measure of disease activity. The treat to target goal of body surface area less than or equal to 1% with disease activity was achieved by 76% at week four and 68% at week 16. There were no treatment related adverse events. The addition of topical calcipatrine beta-methasone to biologic therapy may prevent or delay switching in patients with significant disease activity despite stable biologic therapy. Let's go over the methods first. The trial utilized an open-label, single-blind, observational real-world design. It involved adults with psoriasis covering less than or equal to 5% of their body surface area despite being treated with biologic agents for greater than or equal to 24 weeks. All patients received the calcipatrine beta-methasone foam once daily for four weeks, followed by calcipatrine beta-methasone foam on two consecutive days every week for an additional 12 weeks. Calcipatrine beta-methasone foam consists of calcipatrine 0.005% in combination with beta-methasone dipropionate 0.064%. Here are the key findings. 25 patients were included, 18 men and seven women with a mean age of 53 years. 84% were Caucasian. On average, patients had a 24-year history of psoriasis. At baseline, 52% were being treated with ustekinumab, 20% with adalimumab, 20% with secukinumab, and 8% other biologics. At weeks 4 and 16, average improvements were 63% and 49% respectively for Physicians Global Assessment, or PGA, 59% and 40% respectively for BSA, 77% and 59% respectively for the PGA times the BSA. Total clearance of psoriasis occurred by week four in 28%. At baseline, 12% of patients met the treatment to target goal of BSA less than or equal to 1%. At weeks four and 16, this increased to 76% and 68% respectively. At baseline, 4% of patients had a PGA score of less than or equal to one. At weeks four and 16, this increased to 76% and 68% respectively. The Dermatology Life Quality Index score improved from three at baseline to one at both weeks four and 16. Other measures of treatment satisfaction also improved. There were no treatment-related adverse events or any serious adverse events. Here are my thoughts and analysis of this study. Biologics are very effective, but a lot of the time, even the most effective biologic does not completely clear the patient of psoriasis. The low DLQI of three show that patients had a great response from their perspective even before the topical was added. The latest guidelines say the goal should be to get the psoriasis down to less than 1% body surface area effective. Adding a topical may be a good way to do that in patients who are on a biologic and who are almost there. So the glass is more than half full. In just four weeks, three or four patients get to less than 1% body surface area involved. On the other hand, one in four doesn't, and one in three doesn't by week 16. How do the results of this study impact the current state of patient management? Topicals may be old fashioned, but they're still useful for helping people on biologists get more fully clear their psoriasis. How do the results of this study impact the future state of patient management? New biologics keep coming, and they seem to have higher and higher clearance rate. But despite that, patients often have some residual disease for which topicals will be appropriate. What questions remain unanswered? We have to pay close attention to patients' adherence to treatment. 
I think the reason this study did not observe continued improvement between week four and week 16 is that patients may have become less adherent to their topical treatment over that time. The other thing is this study only tested one particular topical treatment. Which one is best is not known. I suspect there may not be one best for everyone. Perhaps the best one is the one that your particular patient wants to use.